Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzmunk TV here, aka G133, back with another video on the channel for you guys today. I want to welcome you guys back here to the Legit Shoot Podcast. We are reviewing and reacting to Monday Night Raw uh, for, the, uh, for March 25th, 2024. A little rusty on the intro here, but um, yeah. Uh, I don't really want to waste any time. I want to get straight into it. Um, for those of you guys who are normal uh, or who are used to my reviews here when it comes to wrestling, usually I do them live, like live on the channel as a live stream. But I, I might, I think I'm going to switch it, go back and forth. Sometimes we'll do it live. Sometimes we'll do it um uh, you know, pre-recorded. So I'm recording this literally right after Raw just went off off the air. And you know, uh, I'm also wanted the trains to structure these as well. I don't want to do like two hour podcasts all the time unless it's like a really big topic or like a pay per view or anything like that. Um, I more want to focus on the things that I found interesting on the show. Um, and you know, uh. And keep and really just keep the train moving. Uh, so you know, don't be surprised. There's some things that I might skip here and there. Um, when it comes to Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, when we review those shows, just because you know I want to focus and spend a little more time talking about the big um topics coming out of the show. We don't really have to review every single thing because some things are just you know may not as matter as much to me that came out of this show um so i just want to let you guys know uh but so you're still gonna get the same energy and passion that you guys always get for me i really want to get back to doing consistent reviews uh because we did that for so many years but you know my life has gotten so busy now that you know it's been it's really up in the air when you get a review from me and i really want to get back on track to that you know and give you guys the podcast you guys have enjoyed for so many years so and that front, let's get into it. So Monday Night Raw tonight, um, we are less than two weeks out from WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia. And tonight on Raw, um, I'll, I'll say right here, easily the best Raw of the year. One of the best wrestling, just pure, just wrestling TV shows. I'm including AEW, Ring of Honor, whatever you guys watch. This was a fantastic show, um, really from top to bottom. You know, of course, there was a couple things nitpicky here and there that I didn't really like. But for the, for the most part, you know, about 90 did 95% this was an awesome show this was easily the best raw of the year everything felt focused everything really felt um like it had direction and really now that's what you should be doing we're two less than two weeks out for wrestlemania you know um we only have one monday night raw left before wrestlemania next week um two smackdown so we're in the home stretch now Right now is when you know um, you put the finishing touches on your you know your big storylines and your big matches. For the most part, the WrestleMania card is pretty much um, pretty much all set, pretty much complete at this point. You know there might be some last minute additions, right? And though you know they'll probably put a couple matches here on Raw or SmackDown next week that could be WrestleMania matches, but because of how packed the WrestleMania card is, right? Um, they won't be on in WrestleMania. So you might, you know, get some like Battle Royal matches or get some matches that you could that could actually be good enough to make the WrestleMania card. But they'll put them on the show uh or put them on Raw and SmackDown instead, you know, just to save some time so that the matches at, that we do get at WrestleMania, you know, get more time and you get the story. Um um, and the time that they do to tell, you know, the story and those matches. So, of course, next week we will do our annual, you know, WrestleMania preview and prediction show. Where we'll go through all the matches and I'll give you guys my predictions. Um, <laughs> I kind of wish we could bet on WWE. It, 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 in my opinion, it would be easy money. But, um... And if you guys know any WWE sports books, because I can't find any, let me know in the comment section. The day that, you know, we can legally bet on WWE, holy moly, that's going to be something. But, um, still, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting over a cold, so forgive me, guys. But really, Monday Night Raw, everything felt 
really, really well. Of course, the big highlights of the show were, you know, Cody Rhodes and The Rock, right? They had a face-off to start the show, and then they had a big brawl to end the show where The Rock destroyed Cody Rhodes. We'll talk about that in just a second. Of course, and CM Punk returned um, to Monday Night Raw tonight. He is still injured. He's not re- medically cleared from his tricep injury, and he won't be recovered probably until the summertime. But, uh... He did reveal he'll be at WrestleMania tonight, and you know it was revealed that he will play a role in the CM or in the Seth Rollins, uh, Drew McIntyre World Heavyweight Championship match. And I do have a hot take on that and what I think um, CM Punk will do um, near the end of that match, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. Those were the two biggest things. We also had some really good um, segments, you know, with Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch. Um, as you know, they have, you know, finally put a focus on that, you know, the last couple of weeks they've had Becky Lynch doing like a mini feud, but like Liv Morgan and Nia Jax, but now, you know, they're fully, uh, focusing on, uh, those two, um, for us, man, we had Jay Uso versus, um, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, which main event of the show, um, and then, of course, that that had a, that played a big role with the bloodline. Of course, we know we're getting Jimmy Uso versus Jay Uso at WrestleMania, but uh, you know, this all ties into the overarching bloodline story with The Rock and Roman and Cody. Uh, so those were really the big things. There were some other things on on this show that happened as well, um, but for the most part, those were the biggest things. So uh, you know, let's not waste any time. Let's get into it, right? Um. So we'll start with Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes opened the show tonight. Um, he did come out in a full suit. He came out with, you know, shirt, a tie, a vest, right? And, you know, one thing is Chicago, that show, that, that arena was on fire tonight. We know WWE has been on a huge hot streak of late with sellout shows. You know, I, I forget how many consecutive sellouts they've been on. But uh, the Allstate Arena tonight uh, in Chicago, I believe that's what the arena is called. Um they had over 15,000, which I believe I read on Twitter, um, one of the highest paid um, or one of the highest attendance records for Raw maybe ever. Um, someone can fact check me in the comment section on that. But almost a completely sold out show. Um, and it, it was the fact is, you know, they kept selling out, so they kept opening up more tickets. So if you saw tonight, WWE used a smaller stage um, because, you know, the, to make it work, to fit more fans into that arena, they made a smaller stage so that they could have fans sitting behind the stage. It was a really cool visual. So it'll be interesting if WWE decides to do that more, right? If they decide to go with the, the shorter stage setup, um, so that they can fit more, uh, people when they do these big sold out shows, right? Of course, clearly a big reason for that was, of course, CM Punk um, being there. We all know how big a draw CM Punk is. Um, But Cody Rhodes came out to start the show. Huge pop as always, right? And, you know, Cody, you know, he talked about basically now that, you know, we're two weeks out. There's, you know, we're in that like kind of weird phase, right? Um, Where we're near the end of the road to WrestleMania, right? Because WrestleMania is right around the corner. (coughs) You know, but. You know, a lot of the talking's already been done, and now it's just really getting to WrestleMania, right? Um, and basically, you know, he talked about his face to face with Roman Reigns, um, and pretty much taking care of, of business, right? And he, you know, he talked about how he had every right once again, you know, uh, to choose Roman, um, and challenge Roman once again, and how, um, He's a man of his word. You know, he talked about how, um, you know, at at house shows, he had made promises to be at people's birthday parties and be at the best man at random people's weddings, even though he didn't really know these people, you know. Uh, And he was like, the reason why he does all these things and the reason why he stays so long after um, the show is because... um, He's pretending to be the champion because the champion is never there. Some people, you know, took this as maybe a dig at Seth Rollins, right? Uh, 
You know, I kind of, it kind of reminded me of John Cena a little bit. Not a dig at John Cena, but you know how Cena always said the champ is here when he was champion uh, throughout his prime. Um, but it was a dig at Roman Reigns because, you know, Roman Reigns is the undisputed champ. And, of course, he's never there. He doesn't work house shows. You know, uh, he only works, you know, a certain amount of dates a year. You know, so that that was a cool dig. And, of course, if Cody wins at WrestleMania, like we, you know, we hope and expect him to, um, Cody will then, you know, he'll no longer have to pretend as the champion. He'll be the legitimate champion at all of these shows. So, um, Cody talked about um, that. He also did, there was a cool moment where um, he basically told the, told the fans, you know, to basically point along at the WrestleMania sign with him, you know, because he was basically saying at WrestleMania, he's going to need all, all the fans, you know, the fight with him against the bloodline. He's going to need, you know, their support um, and them being behind him um, no matter what. Right, um, and they all did this cool thing where they pointed at the WrestleMania sign together. You know, and Cody, you know, talked about how WrestleMania is once again about you know being the tribal chief and beating the final boss in The Rock, and then boom, The Rock's music um, hit, and The Rock comes out. Remember, The Rock was not advertised for the show tonight. Right, he was advertised. Of course, he's been heavily advertised for the final Monday Night Raw before Mania in Brooklyn next week. We know next week in Brooklyn, The Rock, yeah, Roman Reigns, you know, they're all advertised for the show, um, for the final Raw before Mania. So it's gonna be definitely another must-watch show. But The Rock comes out electrifying pop even though he's a heel he gets an uh, amazing pop pat mcafee goes wild on commentary pat mcafee has been one of the best things about this world of wrestlemania because you know um he's allowed to really just be himself out there on commentary um which is great so pat mcafee freaks out that everybody freaks out the rock comes out with his new electrifying entrance and then, you, of course, you know, the transition into the Hollywood rock theme. It just gets better every single time. It You know, it's almost, I kind of almost wish you can kind of get it as a ringtone. The transition from the rock theme, like his babyface theme, right, into, you know, the, the heel Hollywood theme is absolutely sick. You know, I, I'm very excited to see, like, what kind of entrance the rock has for WrestleMania next week, you know, and how they mix it, you know, they mix it up. Because man, I, I'm loving this heel rock. You know, he he's doing a, an amazing job. <clears throat> so the rock comes out, right? The you know, Chicago goes wild, but I noticed right away that the rock did not grab a microphone. He did not grab a microphone. Instead, um him and Cody have a kind of like a a, a face to, you know a face off. They're facing each other, you know, staring each other in the ring. It was like it was long. It was like three, four minutes just staring each other down. And it was like it was an epic moment. And then the rock walks straight up to Cody Puts his hands behind his back, almost kind of like he's daring Cody to slap him again, right? And if I was Cody, I would have slapped him, you know. Well, you could, you know, like you're not gonna sit there and disrespect me. And then uh, the Rock whispered something in Cody's ear. Um, I haven't seen anybody on Twitter, you know, kind of like translate what it was, but he whispered something in Cody's ear that left Cody perplexed, right? Cody was like, well, "We know what the hell." Um, and then, of course, that was it. That was it. And then The Rock left. Of course, The Rock got booed. The Chicago crowd was, you know, disappointed because The Rock came out, didn't say anything, unannounced, right? He was unadvertised for the show, but came out and then literally just stood there, said something in Cody's ear, and then left, right? And, you know, of course, the fans wanted Cody, to, you know, I mean, or wanted The Rock to do, like, his, you know, his normal stick, but... Rock didn't say anything, right? Of course, next week in Brooklyn, when The Rock and Roman Reigns are there, I, I expect The Rock to have a lot more to say, but he didn't say anything tonight. So then, of course, you know, we go backstage. We come back from break. The Rock, um, uh, one of the backstage interviewers are trying to say, well, you know, what did you say in Cody's ear? And The Rock said, go ask Cody. Later in the show, Cody got asked by Kathy Kelly, or not Kafka, the other one, the other female, 
Um, and uh, they asked Cody what did The Rock say, and The Rock, uh, Cody says, I can't repeat what he told you, but um, you know, um, it's a promise that The Rock will not fulfill at WrestleMania. That's all Cody can say, you know. Um, and we're going to move a little bit. We're going to skip towards the main event to continue our Rock and Cody conversation, right? Like I said, you know, I will say there are some times where, you know, they make Cody not to look like a chicken, but I, you know, Cody is a badass in his own right. But there's times where, you know, he acts a little bit, I don't know, like too diplomatic, right? Like. I want Cody sometimes just to slap the shit out of the rock just to do it. You know, like back in the day, like say here's an example. <clears throat> back in <clears throat> excuse me. Got this bug in my throat. Um, remember back in twenty eleven at or no, it was like twenty twelve, when Brock Lesnar returned to WWE. Um, and it was right after Cena had lost to The Rock at WrestleMania twenty eight, right? Literally that the night after Mania, Lesnar F five Cena, and then you know that's it. Literally the next week on Raw, right? You know Lesnar kind of you know explains why he's back in WWE. This was before, of course, Paul Heyman was doing all the talking for Lesnar. Cena comes straight out, right, and literally walks straight up to Lesnar and slaps him in the face, and they have a huge brawl. And remember, like Cena had like the bloody mouth and everything. Epic segment. It was epic. That's the kind of, but you know, I want that badass shit from my baby faces. Like, n don't take shit from anybody. Cena had that about him, right? Stone Cold Steve Austin, of course. Um, all these guys. Sometimes Cody just kind of stands there and he takes it sometimes. Like, you know, because deep down Cody is a respectful, he's a good guy. He wants to make the right choice. But I'm sometimes like, Cody, man, just like, you know, like it. You know, per storyline, it took Cody almost like a full month to actually slap The Rock. It was cool seeing Cody slap The Rock a couple weeks ago on SmackDown. But it was like, it had been a whole month after the WrestleMania kickoff. So I was like, he should have already done this. We should already, you know... Like, why did it take us a month for Cody to get, you know, his, his, you know, his get back on The Rock? Then And then tonight, you have The Rock in the ring. And Cody... Um, pretty much, The Rock was giving Cody a free shot to bitch slap him in the face. Cody doesn't take it. And I'm like, what are we doing here? Yo, Cody, slap this guy in the face. Bitch slap him. What are you doing? And he doesn't. He, he chooses not to, right? And I'm like, you know, sometimes that bothers me about Cody a little bit. You know, especially, you know, if Cody's going to be the face of the company after Mania as the Undisputed World Champion. You know, I need Cody to not always, you know, he has the look, he has the charisma, right? He has the in-ring ability and everything. Sometimes I just want that badass nature about him. Like, take no prisoners. I don't give a fuck about you. Like, if, you know, if, you know, you hit me, I'm going to swing back on your ass. Yeah, you know, sometimes I just want that from Cody. So, you know, anyway... Uh, ne you know, next we get, um, so like later on in the show, um, after the main event, we get Jey Uso versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Pretty much all the big WrestleMania players are involved outside of Roman Reigns, all right, because, of course, Roman's not there. And, you know, basically, you know, uh, you know, the bloodline tries to interfere and caught Jey Uso in the match. Seth takes out Jimmy, um... Cody takes out Solo, um, and then Drew McIntyre attacks Seth, you know, from spent, you know, and this was coming, you know, spawning from what happened earlier in the night, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then Cody, um, as Cody's brawling with Solo backstage, right, he fights off both uh, Jimmy and Solo, but then all of a sudden he gets attacked. By the Rock. And first off, it's like, okay, we're seeing The Rock actually get physical here, right? You know, no no, no little, like, slap shit or promo. The Rock's actually having a brawl with Cody. And The Rock, you know, with the whole, you know, the final boss gimmick he, he's taking on, right? You know, he absolutely whoops Cody's ass. You know, because I was looking, there was, like, almost 10 minutes in the show. I'm like, oh, gosh, we're getting a full-blown brawl here with 10 minutes left in the show. And The Rock absolutely destroys Cody. 
literally destroys him. Throws him um, all around the backstage area into crates. Drops tools on him. Takes literally like a, a big ass trash can and throws it on Cody. Um, and it felt like it literally felt like your uh, WWE 2K24 like backstage brawl, right? And then the visuals. So Rock takes Cody outside, you know. Um, and meanwhile, Rock this whole time, um, he like is yelling at Cody like, "Here you go, here you go," like literally, and it, it it's really badass. And then they go out into like the kind of like the the parking lot, like the you know where you know Cody's uh, uh buses, all right. And then you got this also, it's like, it's raining outside. It's not pouring, but it's drizzling. So you get this awesome visual of the, you know, the rock that's destroying Cody. He rips off, he rips Cody's shirt off, right? And he's just absolutely destroying Cody, throwing him into the bus, right? There was like a railing that looks that looked like there was like a ramp under where you know you have like the cars i guess that's like how the you know that it looks like it led into like a indoor parking garage i i, I thought for a second rock was gonna like throw cody over it you know but they didn't instead you know they just had the rock kind of throw cody like into the bus right right you know and then eventually cody gets bloody and then the rock starts talking shit to the camera one another one of the, another like cool visual of all this in the background, right? There was another like a, there was like a production bus, right? And on it, it was like you had John Cena, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and then you also had like Trish Stratus on it. And it reminded me, of course, with Cena and Stone Cold, you can make an argument that those are probably The Rock's two greatest rivals. Right, of course, Stone Cold Steve Austin number one easily from the Attitude Era, one of the best rivalries of all time, and of course the John Cena one, well, you know, a lot more modern from of course ten years ago, their feud, their three year feud from like twenty eleven through twenty thirteen, right, um, unforgettable, never before, never again, um. So I, I love kind of like the history in the background and it almost felt like intentional, right? How you had like, you know, seen it, you know, or the, you had the rocks arguably his two greatest rivals, you know, kind of like watching on via the production truck. And now this new rivalry rock has in 2024 with Cody Rhodes and we see eventually, you know, Cody gets bloody, you know, pretty bloody. And, the, you know, Rock's talking shit. And he's looking at the camera like, you know, talking about, you know, Mama Rhodes, Cody's mom. And talking about like how this is symbolic because this is what's going to happen at WrestleMania. How he's going to beat Cody into a bloody pulp. And then, you know, the Rock takes off his shades and then he's wearing a belt. Literally that says Mama Rhodes on it. A white belt. And then he starts quote, you know, talking about how, you know, talking shit about uh, Cody's father, Dusty, and then talking about how, um, um, how, yeah, Dusty talked about hard times. Dusty didn't know anything about hard times. Uh, you know, the hard times I'm going to make you go through, boy. Call Cody a boy. It's like literally swearing and everything. And it was cool because as The Rock is swearing, of course, since they're on live TV, it gets blurred out, right? But in the arena, you could literally hear the fans react to it because, like, you know, Rock is out here dropping F bombs and shit. And it's like, it's amazing. And then. Um, basically, then he takes the the blood coming from Cody's forehead and wipes it on the belt, right? And then you know you have Cody just sitting there at, in a bloody pulp, almost knocked out. And then the Rock can say, you know, uh, uh, basically like to close the show, he's like, this was the only way, kind of like some like Thanos type shit from like Avengers Endgame, um. And that's how the show closes out. An absolute amazing way, amazing segment, amazing way to end the show. And I, the the best thing is like you have the rain in the background. It, this is really like some like movie type shit. Like really, really cool. You know, the rain has had a whole new element on top on top of it. Um, that made it perfect. Just absolute cinema. What we're seeing. And, you know, I, I, I want to keep reminding you guys that if WWE didn't pivot, because remember, the original direction was not supposed to be what we were getting. 
You know, at first it was supposed to be Cody versus Roman with no rock. But then the rock came back with the TKO board. Then it was getting changed to, you know, be Cody and Seth. And then it was going to be rock and Roman. Then, of course, the we want Cody move it, you know, and then Triple H basically, you know, being able to, you know, convince the rock. Like, no, we need the pivot. And then we're getting this. Um... If WWE didn't pivot, if Triple H didn't see what the fans truly wanted and then pivot, we would have got none of this absolute cinema that we're getting. The Rock is operating on an unreal level right now. Um, and I will say this. The one negative I will say that this is, that coming out of this that I'm seeing, it's The Rock is really overshadowing Roman. And I'm sorry, I don't, and I don't, I don't know, especially now with a less than two weeks left. We only have what, one, two SmackDowns and one Raw yet, or one Monday Night Raw left. And we know that Rock will be and Roman will be on Raw next week. I I don't know if Rock or Roman's advertised for SmackDown this week. I know they're in Connecticut this week, but I don't know if the Rock, if either of them are advertised for this week's show. Um. No matter what, I understand Roman's the champion, but he does feel like he's been heavily overshadowed um, by The Rock. You know, they did, you know, they, it was a good face-to-face -face with Cody and Roman last week. But it really does feel like there's more of a emphasis on the tag team match than the world title match. And I understand it a little bit, you know, because, of course, this is a rematch of last year, right? You know... No matter what happens with the tag team match, no matter if Rock and Roman win, which I do think Rock and Roman will probably win night one, um, or if it's you know it ends up being one on one just between Cody and uh, Roman, you know, no, you know, no outside interference, no bloodline, no none of that. I I feel like I I, I feel like Roman's been overshadowed here, you know. Yeah, of course you want to make it about Cody, you know, you know, getting his revenge for last year, his road to redemption, right? And having this kind of this epic way to kind of end this four-year run that Roman's been on. But still, I can't have I can't help but think that, you know, Roman has been overshadowed. What has Roman really done here? Especially since like the press conference. Really, when you look at it, Roman Rut you know, Rock overshadowed Roman at the press conference, of course, with the slap, you know, heard around the world and the Rock's heel turn ever since then, right? You know, they had the Rock acknowledge Roman. The Rock did the concert in Memphis a couple weeks ago, right? You know, Cody slapping the Rock. You know, what has Roman really done? As you know, Roman's just sat there and done his normal stuff. I'm not saying Roman hasn't done anything good, but it, it, the focus is not has not seen the bend on Roman. Roman's been overshadowed by Cody and The Rock really at every turn. You know, this I'm, I'm I, I think I'm more excited now for a few. And I know Cody and Roman. The match is going to be epic. I will it overshad will it do better than their match from last year? I don't know. You know, um. But I think I'm more excited for like a potential future Cody versus Rock match than a Rock uh, than the Rock and Cody Rhodes this year, assuming that Cody wins. I think now with everything they've done with this feud and you know all the investment they've done into this final boss gimmick for the Rock and Chino you know, turning him heel, it's been absolutely epic. I feel like I'm more invested for like a future maybe like SummerSlam or even a future WrestleMania match with Cody and The Rock than a future than the match we're getting right now with The Rock or right now with Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. And I don't know if they could do anything in the you know the next week and a half to change my mind. I still think WrestleMania is going to be epic. I, I'm so hyped for it, but. You know, Roman has been overshadowed a lot, a lot. You know, it feels more like no matter how, you know, you can have the Rock acknowledge Roman Reigns as much as you want. It still feels like the Rock's the one calling the shots here, not Roman. You know, and maybe it's because the Rock has appeared more on television on the world of WrestleMania than the undisputed champion, if we're being honest. Maybe that's why, you know, the Rock's been there more than Roman has. I don't know, but that's just the way it feels. 
that's the way it feels, you know? And I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing, but at the end of the day, at least for another two weeks, you know, Roman is the undisputed champion, you know? And I don't think your world champion should be getting overshadowed that much um, by anybody, you know, when you're this close to, the, you know, the biggest show of the year. Um... But that's my thoughts. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think uh, about that. But um, but still, the segment tonight was epic. I will also say this. Of course, part of me believes, especially with all these little hints that The Rock has been, like, you know, dropping, that, you know, maybe he's secretly working with Cody Rhodes. This is all an act for them to fool Roman Reigns. Or maybe this is all planned that the you know the Rock you know actually plans to turn on Roman Reigns at WrestleMania and you know go back being a babyface, you know maybe that was the plan. But I don't know. I'm starting to think that they you know if if WWE was considering having the Rock turn on Roman at WrestleMania because you know of course down the line they're gonna do Rock and Roman eventually. No matter if that's you know later on this year or at SummerSlam right or at like WrestleMania next year, right? Part of me is starting to think that they should keep the Rock heel a little bit longer. Cause you know, I think there is money in a future Cody versus Rock um WWE match. WWE title match. It, it, or I, I also think a lot of it depends on how the Rock looks at WrestleMania. We know the Rock will be in shape, but you know what kind of wrestling shape will the Rock be? We don't know. But Part of me is starting to think that maybe, you know, you just you pivot and you can still have Cody win at Mania. But maybe you consider, like, maybe at, like, SummerSlam or something, maybe you consider having Cody, uh, you know, having Cody face The Rock then. I think it's something to consider. We've heard reports that potentially The Rock, you know, might be, you know, work another match, you know, this year. But nothing's been confirmed at this time. But I definitely think it's something that we, uh, should consider if the plan is for the rock to you know turn back into a baby face at mania and this was all supposed to be some short-term um thing but still i don't know I'm, I'm just sitting here speculating you know but i love what they did tonight i do think it does overshadow roman a little bit but um you know still uh i'm still hyped as hell i love what they did tonight um, and I think, you know, one of the things now is how will Cody recover? You know, there's a week and a half and, you know, they had The Rock absolutely, you know, establish his dominance all over Cody uh, tonight. So how with how will Cody recover? You know, you know, will he try to get payback on The Rock? Will he even be able to get any payback? The Rock beat him into a bloody pulp tonight. How will, you know, how will Cody rise up? You know, if, if Cody's not able to rise up from this, he has absolutely no chance at WrestleMania per storyline. So, I think it's going to be interesting to see how will Cody recover from this in the next week and a half. You know, will we see him get any payback? Because if I'm a babyface, if I'm the badass babyface, I want The Rock's blood in return. All right, like, you made me draw, you know, you 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 made me, you made me draw blood tonight. I'm going to make you bleed. And, uh, you know, I'm going to get my payback. Hopefully that's where they're going. Hopefully we, you know, get to see Cody get some kind of revenge on The Rock in the next couple of weeks. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But I think that's the next part of this story going on in the into the last week and a half here before Mania. How will Cody get his revenge? Will he get revenge? You know, because he got absolutely annihilated there tonight. But still, really good stuff. Moving on. Moving on. Um... We had Ricochet versus JD McDonough. Um, like I said, I don't want to spend really at too much time on this. This was really good for a TV match, right? Of course, neither one of these two have any concrete plans for Mania. Like I said, if they decide to do like a battle roy or something, or you know, something like that, that's how these two will probably get on the card. Um, but um. Yeah, this 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 was still a very good television match. One of the biggest highlights, I think, JD was going for like an arm drag on Ricochet, and then uh, JD uh, 
or literally Ricochet jumped up and countered it into like a I forget what it's called. Um that the flippy move. Um I think it was a poison Rama. No. I forget what it was called. Uh, sunset flip, I believe. I think it was a sun. I, I think it was a sunset flip. Um, I don't know why I'm forgetting my my moves all of a sudden. Um, but yeah, we, uh, but yeah, it, you know. Um, so Ricochet won this with a. Sh I, I forget the move. I don't. I don't know why. I'm forgetting my moves all of a sudden. But anyway, um, yeah, but Ricochet won with a standing shooting star press to JD McDonough. Um, so, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe, you know, Ricochet, you know, the last three weeks he's beat the Judgment Day. He's beaten JD twice now, and he beat Dominic last week. Um, maybe they're setting up Ricochet for a post um, push. You know, maybe that's what they're playing for. Ricochet is a very popular babyface. We all know how Rick, good Ricochet is. So maybe that's what they're planning here. Um, going into, the, you know, going into uh, post-WrestleMania. You know, just look at Ricochet. We'll have a match. But maybe they're setting up Ricochet for a push. Maybe something with the IC title. I don't know. But, you know, Ricochet is, you know, slowly developing some really good momentum. So, you know, good for him. But this, um, uh, we had CM Punk come out, right? Of course, this was one of the biggest advertised um, things for the show. CM Punk returning um, in his home state of Chicago, right? Talking about basically what his WrestleMania role was going to be. Of course, we know he's out of action and he's not yet fully healed from his tricep injury. He won't be fully healed till later this summer. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I love what they're doing with the presentation out with Kevin Dunn being gone. It makes me kind of sick to my stomach that Kevin Dunn was holding WWE's production back all these years. Like just the visual of seeing these, you know, seeing the superstars in Gorilla just you know, and then walk out from Gorilla, you know, onto the stage. It's 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 freaking awesome. I absolutely love it. Um, and they did that with CM Punk tonight. Seeing him walk from Gorilla all the way around um the curtain out to the arena, freaking awesome. Especially with the crowd singing his song, right? You could tell Punk was happy to be there. This segment here with CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, and Seth Rollins, I think will probably go down, you know, unless Punk and them top it later this year. Um, this will go down as one of um, one of the, you know, the maybe the promo segment of the year. I don't know if anything else can really beat this. This felt unscripted. It, it felt like they just told these uh, Seth, Drew, and Punk, you know, like we could, you know, and you can feel it feels like there's like genuine not hate but ill will like these three really don't like each other maybe you know off tv they're you know they're friends and you know they're all doing this to make the, a, a great story right but and I, and I love that part of the to be like you don't know like you know what's real what's not anymore like you don't know who hates who right or you know like these two are doing an amazing job of you know how you know Really, with the uh, with the portrayals their characters are giving, and making it feel like genuine disdain, like Drew McIntyre with his constant social media trolling of Punk, Punk just kind of ignoring Drew McIntyre, but then when he's there in the arena, absolutely wanted to you know rip McIntyre's face off, and of course Seth still kind of ignoring Drew. Right, which he kind of the day when Seth comes out, Seth his whole time was really just focused on Punk and not really focus on drew right and still it's like punk's focus you know um is still in all the wrong places and it might be what causes him the world title at mania um everything about it was, was freaking awesome you know it felt like an unscripted segment it's like they they told these three guys like hey you guys get like 20 minutes go out there you know at the end of the day you know Make it clear that Punk will be like the special guest ring commentator or whatever for the World Heavyweight title match. But, you know, do whatever you want to build up to that. Have fun. 
This felt unscripted as hell. And, you know, it was, I, I, you know, luckily WWE posted the, the full segment while the main event was on. So I got to watch it again. It was freaking awesome. Everything about it, you know, punk coming out, smile on his face, right? Punk not wasting any time saying that, um, he did plan to be at WrestleMania, but he just didn't know what road that would be. Even though he wasn't cleared the fight, his mouth still worked, right? And he said, we're not on Netflix yet, so go ask April what that means. So basically, of course, um, he that was a kind of like you know, a sexual reference to his, his wife, you know. So then taking it from there, Punk... Um, Basie uh, named uh, a lot of people who've been talking about him are not talking about him. Of course, he went, you know, down the line, you know, talking about Roman Reigns, who had mentioned him on Pat McAfee show. And basically kind of punk talked about how, you know, he kind of, you know, expects Roman will be coming down the mountain this year. Kind of basically like, you know, Roman will be when Roman loses the Cody at Mania, his dominant run at the top will finally stop and he'll be coming down. But Punk, once he returns from tricep injury, will be going back up. So Punk basically said, hey, you know, we'll be crossing paths at some point, kind of teasing, of course, a future Punk and Roman match, which will be awesome. I don't know when that will be done. Um, you know, they can save that. They don't have to necessarily do that match even this year. That's a match that they can save um, for a future WrestleMania, future SummerSlam. Like, that's something I think they could save till, all the way till next year. Because w- what they have now with Drew and Seth, I think Punk, you know, when he comes back, um, that should be Punk's focus. Oh, you can keep That can keep Punk busy all the way from SummerSlam to Mania if they play it right. Um... But then uh, after that, um, Punk then talked about, you know, uh, The Rock, who hadn't mentioned anything about him at all since he had been back. And Punk said, you know, that's good because maybe The Rock remembers our 2013 feud when we all remember the famous line, um, you know, Punk said to uh, Rock, um, your arms are just too short to box with God. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of that line personally, but I understood the reference. Um, so that was a cool line from Punk. Um, and then Punk, of course, talked about Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins. And then Drew McIntyre came out. Of course, Drew has been trolling Punk for months now, ever since the Royal Rumble. And how McIntyre basically took the spot that Punk was supposed to have by injuring him via, you know, per storyline. Drew came out. Punk and Punk was doing everything to try to get McIntyre into the ring, but McIntyre just won his budge. You know, McIntyre trolling Punk with his T-shirts, right? Punk saying, "I never had to put another man on a T-shirt um, to be to be a, to be relevant," right? McIntyre said an awesome line saying like, yeah, you, you call yourself straight edge. You call yourself, you don't do drugs. You don't drink, right? But yet you're always in rehab. Fan- that was a fantastic line. Uh, then basically, Drew kept saying stuff like, oh, Punk, you give me the motivation to, com- you complete me, right? Whenever I'm, you know, in the last set, you know, trying to get through my workout, whenever I need that extra motivation, I just think of you, and that helps. Um, so, like, really, really good stuff. Punk, uh, Drew talked, and this was probably the line of the night. Drew talked about being named the chosen one, and Punk said, "Who, who, uh, who, who gave you? Uh, who's the one that called you the chosen? Right? Why don't you say his name? Clearly, of course, a reference to Vince McMahon." Um, and Punk basically says, "I dare you." You know, I dare you to say uh, the name of the man who who called you that. And Drew literally stopped because Drew, of course, knew he there was no way in hell uh, he was gonna say uh, he was gonna repeat Vince's name. All he could do was smile. So really, really good stuff. Uh, Punk kept calling McIntyre son of a bitch. Um, get your bitch ass in the ring. So really, they just let the superstars just go off the, the the profanity was everywhere tonight you know so it seems like you know not that the uh, people are blaming the rock right which was they were right to people that were going off on the rock for being able to swear not other superstars well it seems like that changed pretty quickly um 
you know, just seeing uh, Punk go off on the, uh, seeing all the superstars actually just swearing tonight was really, really cool. Um, so then uh, Seth Rollins came out, and you could visibly see Punk was absolutely annoyed seeing Rollins come out, right? Started hitting himself in the face with his microphone. Seth then, like, reminded everybody that this is Monday Night Rollins, but then Punk said, even though this is your show, this is my city, um, and Ron said, yes, I'm, it looks like I'm the away opponent tonight. Um, but, uh, then, uh, there was, you know, at this whole time while Punk and Rollins are going at it, Punk, uh, Rollins is not even really looking at Drew, who's his actual WrestleMania opponent. Drew's sitting there on the commentary table with Pat and Michael, who had the funniest reactions to all of this. Um... Rollins asked Punk what he thought, but uh, Punk said, uh, yeah, uh, Rollins asked Punk, do you care what I think? And uh, Punk said no, because clearly it was a rhetorical rhetorical, uh, question, Uh, which even made Seth kind of laugh a little bit. Um, And Rollins says, that's ironic, because I don't think of you at all. You know, I haven't thought of you since our face-to-face months ago when you first came back. Um, You know, and then... Uh, basically, Rollins just started roasting Punk like, you know, hey, at the way you know, at the way you're going, you know, you're uh, that's this is the closest you'll ever get to a world title match again. So, um, Rollins said that Punk, there was no way he could even be the special guest referee if he wanted to because he couldn't count with, with his counting arm, and then Punk literally guts on the floor and counts the one, two, three with his left hand, which was awesome. Like, like I said, un- this felt unscripted, right? Um, and then Punk says, I don't even think I could be an impartial referee with those two dipshits. McIntyre goes like, this is a PG show, brother, which was, like I said, unscripted. And then, uh, basically Ron said, like, uh, I don't care really what you do, but if you are the special guest commentator, it's going to be awesome because you then have to call basically my moment of glory, right? McIntyre kind of also said the same thing, how it would be ironic that Punk would be the one calling um, uh, calling McIntyre's big title win finally in front of fans. Um, and then uh, Punk uh, basically said, um, I guess I will be the special guest commentator, but no matter what, he called out Drew for wearing a skit, a space wearing a skirt. He called out Seth for his outfits and his wife. He said, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be uh, more interesting or, uh, I'm going to do something at WrestleMania that makes you, um, it doesn't matter what, uh, that's going to make both of you interesting for once. And then uh, he tried to leave the ring. Drew tried to respond, but then um, Rollins kicked him in the in the face with a super kick and hit him with a stomp. Right, and that's how the segment pretty much ended. Um, so to me, of course, you know, I love how they had an explanation of why Punk, you know, being the special guest for Reeve, because that's what a lot of us were kind of thinking. But of course, Punk was like, "Yeah, you know, for a world title match like this." I wouldn't be I wouldn't be fair because I can't stand either one of you. Um, and Ron said, "Born Punk, you need to stay out of my way." So I love how they kind of had an explanation for that. And then also, you know, you know, the line that brings me away is Punk said, "I'm going to do something at WrestleMania that makes both of you interesting." What I think might actually happen. Is I think a lot of us have thought about Damian Priest cashing in at um, at WrestleMania, and how he would, he could fail, and then that would kind of be like the start of him, you know, um, being out of the Judgment Day. That's what a lot of us have thought. I honestly think, you know, if WWE wants to do it, I think we have three world champions at WrestleMania. Rollins walks in as champ. Drew wins somehow through some cocky heel antics and then maybe afterwards punks get involved right maybe he attacks drew right gets a layer of revenge and that kind of sets up punk and drew for later this summer right and then i think you could have damian priest cash in on mcintyre because of punk's involvement i think that's what you could do 
Cause I think, I, but I, I, cause I think a lot of us have thought about Damian Priest cashing in and failing, but maybe now, you know, maybe it makes more sense because of Punk, right? Drew still gets his win, but it ends up at what cost? Because of, then he, because of Punk, Punk gets revenge by costing uh, McIntyre the World Heavyweight Title. That's literally moments after his big win. I, th- I honestly think that might be where they go. You know? Because what else can Punk really do? Like, I, I, it's not like you're going to have Punk this GTS McIntyre after he wins the title or if Rollins retains. I don't think that's really interesting. That's just like, eh, okay. Right. And if you really want to add more heat, right, to the story, how, like, Drew injured Punk at the Rumble, right, and cost him, you know, cost him from even getting the WrestleMania, you know, and, you know, now you have, like, all right, Punk's there, and Drew does get a WrestleMania moment, but he gets it completely taken from away, you know, minutes later. And that just adds a whole nother layer to this Punk and McIntyre feud for when Punk is back healthy, if they choose to do it at SummerSlam or if they save for WrestleMania. I, I, I think that's what they should look into. You know, maybe I'm wrong and they don't do this at all, but, you know, come after tonight and Punk, you know, saying I'm going to make both of you interesting at Mania, right? I think that's something that they maybe should look into, you know? And I think, it's a, I think it becomes a larger possibility that Punk is the one that causes the cash-in and causes McIntyre to lose his big moment at Mania. Maybe I'm wrong, but still... But the segment itself was absolutely awesome. I loved every part of it. Literally one of the best WBTV segments we've seen all year on television. Moving on quickly to the uh, woman. We had Ivy Nile versus Candice LeRae. Um, you know, this was Ivy trying to get payback on Candace for, you know, what Candace had been doing to Maxine Dupree uh, the last couple weeks. Um, so uh, this wasn't long. It was just uh, Candace faked an injury, um, and then she stacked up Nile uh, using the ropes for the cheap roll-up win. So clearly, of course, you know, this is Candace turning heel. Um, not too much to go here. We'll see if this leads to a push. Uh, for Candice, or if maybe they're building up Candice um, and, and need to eventually win the tag team titles, don't don't really know. I do like I I'm a, I am a Candice Lorray fan, uh, and I do, I'm a big fan of Indy Hartwell uh, from their time in NXT. You know, definitely want to see them use more. Um, so I'm all for the heel turn. Um, it'll be interesting to see if you know this eventually leads to Indy turning heel. Um, but yeah, you know, clearly this is, you know, they're turning Candace heel and we'll see where this goes. You know, I, I don't know if Candace will ever be pushed to the point where she can be like a women's world champion, but you never know. She is very good in the ring. She's very underrated. Um, so yeah, we'll just have to, you know, keep seeing uh, where this goes. But the clearly, of course, they're turning um, Candace heel and that's about, that's about it here. Um, DIY versus New Day. So this... This is a this is almost a dream match. This is a, you know I think a future tag team title match. You know I, you know I'm of the mindset I would love to see DIY win uh, that six pack ladder match at WrestleMania. I would love to see them get that moment. Um, I don't know if we will, um, but this is a match I could see at a future you know pay per view. Um, New Day, you know, arguably one of the greatest, if not the greatest tag team of all time, uh, against, you know, DIY, um, you know, which I, I love the way them, they have been pushed and built as of late, um, but this could have been a show stealing tag team match, you know, um, you know, two of the best tag teams in the game, but of course the Judgment J jumped both teams, the Miz and R-Truth were on the commentary table, um, but of course the heels, you know, all four members of the Judgment J just laid them out, um, so this was, you know, pretty much just to, you know, establish the Judgment Day as the dominant tag team going into WrestleMania, um, but like I said, I don't think the Judgment Day will walk out of. I would be surprised if the Judgment Day walk out of WrestleMania as champions. Um, I think this will slowly start to see the end of at least Damian Priest's time in the du- Judgment Day. But who knows? I could be wrong. Um, but at least for tonight, the Judgment Day um, stood off tall. Uh, stood up tall. 
we had Andrade versus Giovanni Vinci. Um, this was, you know, and this was a pretty good match, you know. Um, clearly, they're building Andrade up. My theory is, you know, of course, we've seen in recent weeks, Andrade has had um, some segments with the Judgment Day, and they've teased, you know, Andrade working with the Judgment Day going forward. Um, I think what they could be potentially leading to, maybe, is if the plan is eventually to split Damian Priest from the Judgment Day, you know, no matter if he's going to become world champion or maybe, you know, uh, he leaves the Judgment Day out of frustration. I don't know, but I I definitely think, um, you know, I could definitely see maybe Andrade replacing Damian Priest in the Judgment Day um, sometime down the line. Of course, right now, Andrade is a baby face, but I think we all know Andrade works better as a heel. Um, I'm not the biggest Andrade guy, if I'm being honest, you know. Um, my the, the, the time where I was the biggest Andrade fan was probably when he was in NXT and he was with Zelina Vega. Um, but we'll see. We'll see where they're going with this Andrade storyline. Uh, but Andrade wins, so they're going to clearly keep pushing him. Maybe Andrade, they're building it up maybe for maybe a future IC title run. Who knows? Um, but Andrade continues his momentum here. Um, we had a segment between Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley. I said this earlier, but of course... Uh, but uh, as of late, right, um, Rhea Ripley and Becky, you know, they've had some face-offs, but not too much. You know, after Elimination Chamber, they had that face-off the night after um, Raw. But for the most part, Becky's been these last couple weeks focused with, like, Liv Morgan and Nia Jax, kind of side feuds, right, on her road to WrestleMania. But now, you know, they're clearly focused on uh, Becky and Rhea. And, you know, they reestablished that tonight. This was a really, uh, this was another really, really good segment, right? These are two of the best women's wrestlers in the world. You know, arguably the two biggest women stars on the roster right now. I will say this right now. Um, Rhea Ripley is my favorite women's wrestler in the company. I am a huge Rhea Ripley fan. Um, the only, I think the only wrestler that I like more than Rhea Ripley right now is, of course, Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been asking. Quick side note: I know a lot of you guys have been asking, "Where's the uh, Where's the Mercedes Monet reaction um, video um, for AEW? It is coming." Um, Mercedes Monet, she made her debut while I was on vacation a couple weeks back, so I haven't. I just haven't gotten around to it. But we will be talking Mercedes Monet very, very soon here on the channel. So make sure you guys are subscribed for that. And a lot of you know my Sasha Bakes fans are you know are waiting for that content. So it will be coming. So just keep please to stay stay patient with me guys. But I I love Rhea Ripley. Um and I'll keep saying this. Um Rhea Ripley should not lose that title. As you know, as much as Becky Lynch is a worthy foe for Rhea, um I don't think Becky should be the one to take that title off of Rhea Ripley. I think it should be somebody else. Honestly, someone maybe like Liv Morgan. You know, I'm a big fan of Liv Morgan. I would love to see her build up as the one to take down Rhea Ripley. Um, I don't think it should be Becky Lynch. I think Becky Lynch is, of course, the perfect person to face Rhea at Mania, right, with Becky's star power, especially the women's division needs that type of match. But um, I think Rhea should win. I think Rhea should win and continue her dominance uh, over the women's division. Um, I think Becky should put Rhea over. I think it would be kind of almost a step backwards to have Becky be the one to defeat Rhea. Um, especially when you had Rhea beat Charlotte last year. So, uh, Rhea came out with... Uh, with Dom and basically talked about how, you know, Rhea uh, or talked about how Becky had kind of been ignoring her these last couple of weeks, right? Dealing with Nia Jax and Liv Morgan, but she how she felt like Becky wasn't giving her full attention. Uh, and then Becky uh, came out, right? And Becky talked about, you know, like, you know, now do you, she has Rhea's full attention. Talked about, you know, uh, how the differences between them, how... You know, no matter what setbacks Becky has faced in her career, she's always ready to face um, whoever's next. She always, uh, you know, faces every obstacle she has hands on and it's made her better. No matter if it's a veteran she's facing, no matter if she's, um, 
no matter if it's a legend or no matter if it's an up-and-comer. And uh, Becky's, you know, there was some really good stuff said. Becky said how Rhea had not reached yet the point that Becky has, right? Where, you know, you had been at top for a while and then your momentum slowed down or then you reached a point where maybe you weren't resonating with the audience as much anymore, right? Because we all remember last year or no, years ago when Becky first became the man and, then, you know, we saw Becky's run to the top and then Becky got to the top, right? And then she was champion for a year and then we all got sick of it. We all got sick of it because, you know, you know, uh, it was kind of, it was, it got boring after a while. Becky was really doing the same things. Um, I was kind of getting sick of Becky, you know, that's when Becky kind of started dressing weird, right, you know, and it just, it felt less like the man and more like Becky had let the man take over, you know, and then of course, uh, COVID came, Becky got pregnant, and then, uh, then you know, Becky's been back ever since then, um, and she's been here, and now she's back as a face, um, but yeah, Becky, you know, Becky had basically said like, hey, I've been in your shoes. I'd been the champ for a while, you know, beat everybody. And then there became a point where um, I wasn't resonating with the audience as much anymore. Even though Rhea's technically a heel, Rhea also has, you know, can tend to be a, a, a what's the word, a twiddler? I, I forget I forget the word is, a tweener, sorry. You know, if you see on House Rules, Rhea's more of a baby face than a heel. We all know how popular Rhea is, right? And Becky said that, you know, at WrestleMania, when I beat you, you're going to reach that point where, you know, you're, you're not going to be as dominant as you've been. I've been in your shoes, which I, I like that point. But Rhea also brought, Becky also brought up how, you know, hey, you're getting mad at me for not being totally focused on you, but you don't even wrestle on Raw anymore, which is kind of true. Well, well, actually, it's very true. How many times, you know, there's Rhea, at least Rhea appears every single week, right? But Rhea doesn't wrestle that much on Raw. It is kind of obvious. Rhea rarely ever, you know, rarely, I don't forget, I don't remember last time Rhea was pinned right, in any type of match. But it's true. Rhea is more just there every single week in her sexy black outfits, right? Either doing promo segments or whatever, um, or beatdowns. But Rhea, Rhea doesn't wrestle really on She only wrestles technically now on pay per views and house shows. Um, but Rhea said, um, that, hey, when you're me, you know, still, it doesn't matter if you're wrestling or not. People are still talking about me. Kind of reminds me of something that Sasha Banks would say. Uh, Maria says, hey, I, I, you know, I, uh, I could post a photo or a video on social media and then these freaks would lose their minds. But it's just true, right? Whenever Rhea, you know, recently whenever Rhea, you know, posts a picture of herself in her hotel room, right? Right after she woke up or Rhea posts like, um... You know, something from a house show of her, like, you know, you know, uh, jiggling her ass or doing something like that. It gets, you know, millions of, you know, thousands of likes and engagement. So Rhea's like, you know, even if I don't have to wrestle every single week to be the talk of the women's division. Right. And when I step in the ring, I'm as dominant as ever. So it doesn't matter. Um, And then, you know, Becky, um, they kept going back and forth. And then Rhea, uh. Uh, said even after WrestleMania, after I win, I'm gonna send you home, and you're gonna get to sit that. You're gonna sit next to your daughter. Um, you're gonna sit next to your daughter, and you're gonna continue to see me. And then your daughter's gonna call me mommy, which really, really um got Becky pissed. I love this. I love this because this is what we need. You know, it, it, WWE storylines are better when you involve the family, right? There's millions and millions of those examples, like AJ Styles and Samoa Joe with, like, Wendy, right? What they're doing right now with The Rock and Cody Rhodes' mother, you know, uh, Randy Orton uh, punting John Cena's father in the head. There's thousands of examples of this in WWE, right? It adds a whole nother layer when you involve a WWE uh, a superstar's family. Right, and this was like the intensity you really needed for that feud. It was like we had been waiting for Rhea and Becky to reach, you know, that next level. And then you can see Becky got pissed, and you know, Becky got pissed because Becky said, "Don't you dare bring um my daughter into this because you know to you it's just a joke, 
right? To, but to me, that's my world because, my, you know, my father, um, even though my father would have been proud of me for the superstar I've become, I think she, he, uh, he would be even more proud of the mother I've become. So Rhea said, don't you ever do that or it would be the last thing you ever said. So you can see the passion. Becky, you could really feel the emotion and the passion out of Becky um, when she said that. You know, it didn't feel like Becky Lynch talking there. It felt more like Rebecca Quinn. Um, especially, you go, you can think about how hard it was for Becky Lynch to step out of WWE when she was almost at her peak, right? She, you know, she had been champion for a year and then giving up the that title to be, uh, become uh, a mother, right? And then Becky's been able to come back, reach the mountaintop again, but still. Um, you know, you could really think about, feel the realism there in Becky's voice, you know? And of course, I think this was just for storyline, but still, it was awesome. Um, so then afterwards, um, Rhea and Becky, they stopped talking, right? They were about to get into a brawl, and then... You know, Dominic got in the way. Dominic was like, you know, there's no need to do this. And then uh, Becky punched uh, Dominic in the face. And then they showed a awesome replay of it later in the show. And Becky literally, literally punched uh, Dominic in the face. You know, of course, WWE Superstars do an amazing job of selling it. But that was a legit punch. Uh, awesome. We got an awesome slow motion punch. You can go find it on social media. Um... But yeah, then after that, Becky and Rhea got into a brawl, right? Um, and they brawled for a couple minutes around ringside and onto the stage until they got pushed. Uh, I guess got pushed apart. So this is what they needed to do. This 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 was really really good stuff. Um, with Rhea and Becky, the intensity we had waiting for that feud to kind of reach that next level, right? Um. I think I'm more excited for this match than the Bailey and Eos match, to be honest. Um, but still, right now, like I said, Rhea, in my opinion, should retain. I know there's gonna be people saying that Becky's the you know the perfect person to take the title from um, Rhea, but no, I think Rhea should stay champion um, for a little while longer. Um, but still. I'm excited to see where this goes. We still got one more week uh, before WrestleMania. So we'll see what they got planned for us next week with Rhea and Becky. So next up, we had Sami Zayn versus Big Bronson Reed, right? And this this was probably the most questionable decision of the night, in my opinion. Um, what I, I'm like, Why? Of course, they've been going down like the underdog route with Sami Zayn. Class, you know, this has been going back down, going back to Sami Zayn's, you know, NXT days, right? And I love Sami Zayn. And, you know, I said months ago that Sami Zayn should be the one to challenge Gunther um, at WrestleMania. And they even take that title from him. Now, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to, you know, I don't. I don't know if Zayn's going to be the one to defeat Gunther at Mania. I don't. Uh, I'm actually very 50-50 on this. Of course, part of it has been the last couple of weeks. You know, Cat Gable has kind of been in Sami Zayn's head. Um, saying that kind of like that, you know, he doesn't feel like Zayn should be. Excuse me. That Zayn should be the one to get this match at Mania. It should be. Um, it should be himself. Because he feels like Zayn can't beat Gunther even at his best, right? And, you know, th you know, it's been bothering Zayn. They've played Zayn as the underdog. He was already an underdog before, but they really have gone like full, full underdog. Almost make you believe that he doesn't have a chance. As great as Sami Zayn is, they, you know, they, it's like they're really pushing it. Like, they don't want you to believe he has a chance at all. So, um... Basically, what happened is, you know, so Gunther comes out near the end of the match, causes a distraction, and that allowed Bronson Reed to win with the, um, the, the I forget, I don't know why I'm forgetting everyone's Muse, the Tsunami, I think. Um, and then afterwards, um,
Uh, you know, and but I forgot to mention how before earlier Gunther had said that uh, he does not believe he that he didn't even believe he wasn't setting Zayn at all in WrestleMania because he didn't even believe that Zayn uh, could even beat Bronson Reed, and that became true tonight. Uh, and then after the match, Gable kind of gave Zayn a pep talk saying, hey, if you're going to have any chance against Gunther and Mania, like, we, we, you know, you need a new strategy, right? And so, look, I, I hate, I hate, you know, decisions like this because it reminds me of the Vince McMahon era, era right? Drew McIntyre can't name drop Vince McMahon on TV, but I can on my podcast. So... Yeah, I, I didn't like this at all. You know, there's... I don't really care, you know, if, you know, you're making Zayn the ultimate underdog per storyline. Like, I don't care about that, right? It's two weeks before WrestleMania. We all know going into this match that Gunther's the favorite. As much as I would love to see Zayn beat Gunther, we all know that, you know, Gunther's the favorite right now. And I, I think it's like a, I would say it's probably a 70% 30 chance that Gunther will retain against Zayn, if you ask me right now. Right? And then now, right? Now you're having Gunther, um, and now you have Zayn two weeks before WrestleMania where he needs all the momentum against Gunther who hasn't been pinned on the main roster, right? Who's the most dominant IC champion of all time. You're having, you know, Zayn lose to Bronson Reed. Like, I don't, I don't care if you're playing off the underdog. You know, I don't see wh what having Zayn lose by pinfall does. If you want to do a disqualification, that's one thing. Right, if you wanted to do something else like a count out or something else, that's another thing. Having him lose by uh, by uh, by pinfall this close to WrestleMania does not make sense. Like, why you remember Zayn's the babyface here? It's not like Zayn's uh, the champion. Zayn's the babyface challenger. So, what reason are you giving us to believe? If, if Zayn's the babyface and we're supposed to be pulling for Zami Zayn, what reason are we supposed to have that he has any chance against Gunther? Really? At anything, it's just blind faith if we're being honest with ourselves. So I, 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 I don't know what they're really doing here. You know? So, I don't know. They have one week they make us believe that Zayn has any chance against Gunther. I don't know how, how or if they can do it. But... You know, I don't know. I, I I think that was the most questionable decision of the night for me. I don't think you needed to have Zayn lose the Bronson Reed, especially Bronson Reed, who's probably not even going to be on the WrestleMania card, right? If he is, he's going to be on a bat. But I don't think, yeah, I don't think Reed will even be on the WrestleMania card. So, what are we doing here? I don't know. But yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Um, but. We'll see. Maybe, you know, we still got one week to uh, WrestleMania. But I, I, I think that was a very questionable decision tonight on Danny B's part. I, I didn't really you know, agree with it at all. But, hey, we'll see at Mania. Um, but, yeah, other than that, um, we did have the main event, like I said, Jimmy Uso versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, basically, of course, like I said, they had everybody come out and be involved uh, in this match. The big thing, of course, was the Rock Cody Rhodes brawl afterwards, right? Um, like I said, yeah, this was a good match. Uh, you know, Jimmy Usum solo came out, but Rollins and Ray, uh, Rhodes came out to fight them off. McIntyre hit a Future Sock DDT on Seth, right? And Jay won with a spear, so he didn't win with the Usum splash. He won with a spear, right? And then... Uh, and this led, of course, to the Rhodes and the Rock bra. So a good match to end the show, which led into an even better ending to the show with Rock and Cody. So, yeah, there you have it. There's Raw for tonight. Um, like I said, very, very good show. Easily the best show of the year so far, in my opinion. Um, everything hit. Everything, you know, pretty much everything made sense outside, of course, like little things like Sami Zayn losing two weeks before WrestleMania when he's going up against Gunther. But yeah, very, very enjoyable show uh, tonight. Um, very, very good stuff. Um, yeah, uh, 
Look, man, WrestleMania is looking good. You know, this the Triple H, the 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 shows that he is putting on right now, man, and it just gets you absolutely amped for WrestleMania. And this is what it uh, this is what the world of WrestleMania should be about. This is when we should be getting the best Raws and SmackDowns of the year, hyping us up for the biggest show of the year. You know, and next week in Brooklyn with only a couple days before Mania. It should be absolutely epic. Well, you know, we'll have to see. But um, it should be absolutely epic. And I'm excited for uh, next week's show. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, I'm excited to see how will Cody respond to the bloody beatdown he got handed tonight. You know, can Roman establish, reestablish dominance? Because The Rock has overshadowed him all the way. Um, uh the entire road to WrestleMania up to this point, in my opinion. Um, what else will happen, uh, you know, with Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins? Will Punk play a role? Um, how does uh, Punk's role in commentary add a new wrinkle to this match? Everything else going on with Rhea and Becky. Um, lots of cool stuff going on in Monday Night Raw, but I, I, I'm absolutely enjoying it. This is what I love. This is what I love. It feels cool to be a wrestling fan again in 2024, and I love it. But, yeah, let me know in the comment section what you guys thought of the show. Um, if you guys enjoyed the podcast, leave a like on this video. Hit the bell right next to my name, Fitzpunk TV, so you guys are notified every time I post a new video. I'm going to get out of here. Stay safe and healthy, y'all. I will see you guys on the next episode. Peace.